Previously on Travel Girls. The first girl to be eliminated is Kira. All the camera crews are going different directions. What am I doing the next two days? Picking my nose? I don't know. Natalie, you're going to be leaving with Jala and Adam to Sydney. Really? Yes. So get on out here, babe. Congratulations. I knew that I did better than her, but she still thought that we were equal. of 245 days of great weather with a daytime temperature of 22 degrees for 279 days a year. Wow, this is my kind of town. I think I'll stay for a couple days. Our three finalists, though, have the whole entire east coast of Australia covered. It's the second day on tropical Hamilton Island, and Joe has a surprise for Susie. All right, we'll start taking up to the 19th floor here at Reefview. It's the relaxation centre, and you can get a massage. Okay. Hey, hi, D. But it's not all just smooth sailing, okay? So I need you to take notes, I need you to ask questions. Because after that, we're going to get you to give someone a massage. Today, uh, I got a massage, and um, luckily I managed to convince Joe that to learn, the best way to learn massage was to get one. Okay, Susie, first tip. Just getting some oil all over the body, in the area that you're working. Figure eights are always good. You can use thumb circles everywhere if you forget what you want to do next. Thumb do circles. some thumb circles. <laughs> and then the deeper you work, it actually brings more blood to the surface. And when you bring more blood to the surface, you're actually bringing more oxygen to the areas. Uh, I guess the tips that I'd suggest is keep it flowing, keep the pressure on, and don't panic. Okay. I'm sure you'll be able to manage, so have fun and good luck. Thank you. Are you going to be right to string a few words together? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Your eyes are a bit glassy. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to receive a massage this morning and then I had to go down to the beach and select a random person, which was a little weird. Well, that was incredibly relaxing. I feel really good, although my tension is starting to come creeping back in now because I have to go and find someone and massage them. Um, here I go. The girls are all being given tasks designed to push them out of their comfort zones. Hi. Can I offer you a free massage? Well, that would be hard to resist. <laughs> Excellent. Um, the only catch is at the end you have to say, I did a good job. This task will hopefully bring out okay. Susie's more spontaneous side. All right, we found a very brave volunteer. This is Andy, who I'm going to attempt to massage today with what I've kind of learnt. It was much more fun getting one, I think. Anyway, we'll see how I go. <laughs> What's the verdict? That was better than good. You can come back any time. Excellent. Done good. All right, all right, all right. The Sydney crew have finally touched down in Australia's largest city. I woke up today thinking, all right, now I have the chance in the final right, three, right. and it's a competition, and I want to win it. Whenever I found out this morning I was going to Sydney, I was really shocked. But I knew that there was something going to happen because I knew that me and Yana wasn't going to go together. Their first destination is the iconic Luna Park, located alongside the beautiful Sydney Harbour. I'm here at Luna Park in Sydney. This place has been open since 1935. There's so much to do at this place. There's so many different rides and attractions. But the most special thing about this place is that you get up close and personal to the bridge and to the opera house. With her first piece out of the way, Nally can enjoy some good old fashioned fun. I think the pressure is on that I'm the fan of three, as um, I just heard from different people that I wasn't taking it seriously. I want to apply. What'd you get? I think I get the biggest. 
that I wanted to get my personality across first. Oh, nice. And um, my sense of humour, which probably comes across like more fun living. But I can be serious whenever I need to be. And I think now is the time I need to be serious and, um, you know, get that across in my presenting. But, um, like, I, I still got my personality, which I don't think the other two have got that as much. They're probably good at the presenting, but not at the sense of humour and personality. And for the rest of the day, Natalie takes in some of Australia's most well-known sights. I'm in front of the Opera House. I could go in, but it's been a long day. I think I'm going to go to the Opera Bar. This is the ultimate place to come to for a relaxing drink and to see the spectacular views of Sydney. Back in Tasmania, the crew is taking in some history. Today we came to Port Arthur by cruise ship and it was really, really fun. Uh, she was tired, so she missed out on a lot, but uh, it was fantastic. As usual, Heather has a task to complete on this journey. And as usual, she is so enthusiastic. I'm aboard the marina, operated by Derwent River Cruises, where I have the opportunity to go to Port Arthur today and see the island where all the old convicts used to be. Heather spots some Tasmanian locals. But this is a special site. Look at all of these seals. You got the ones playing in the water and some up there sunbathing. How cool is that? After checking out the wildlife, they finally arrive at Port Arthur, which is one of Australia's most significant historical sites. In 1830, it began life as a penal colony where the hardest British convicts were sent. These days, it is a major tourist destination. We got to Port Arthur met up with Phil, our guide, uh, our very own special guide. Blacksmiths, timber cutters, brick makers. It would have been a bustling place. Interesting, huh? Yeah, I don't know what to say. Heather was her usual um, down in the dump self, which was a shame because it does reflect on our job. That's the one thing about having long shots. And then they're like, hey, wait, you guys come back, do it over again. I can hear her whinging, so I'm still rolling. Oh, what's your issue about? Uh, doing long shots and having to walk back and do them again. She'll have a she'll have a rude shock if she actually did become a presenter. I'll tell you, makes us sit back and wonder why it is we're helping this person so much when they don't even want to be here. So, the chapel. What is this whole thing about? The whole idea is to separate you from your fellow prisoner and to remove your identity. So even when we're in church, you can't actually see each other. You can't communicate. The only thing you can listen to is the word of God from the pulpit. Well, if uh, the church looks like this, I can only imagine what the cells are going to look like. Let's go check them out. Life here was not a pleasant one. A very quiet one, but uh, not the sort of quiet you're in for. Fed in your cell, exercise for an hour a day. Um, these cells are small enough, they had a mat they could roll out to sleep on. Heather's enthusiasm really wasn't there and, uh, and she makes that really evident to the people we're working with. What do you want to do here, Heather? What do you want to get us walking up the stairs and into the asylum? Or, well, this is the hospital. Yeah, I mean, you mean hospital? It's a bit offensive to the people you're working with because if she's showing no interest in what they are talking about, what she's essentially saying is, I'm not interested in you and what you do. I took Phil aside and you know, said, Phil, what did you think of Heather? And he, he gave me an honest evaluation of her. Uh, Heather's probably enthusiasm for the day looks, was a bit lacking. He definitely got the impression that she wasn't interested and didn't really want to be there. Perhaps a bit more energy wouldn't go astray, more enthusiasm for what the, the task at hand, but probably the feeling I got out of it. And I think that pretty much says it all. <laughs> Sorry, Helen. I think the comment that they made about me being more enthusiastic was, was fair, yeah, because I was a bit Mm, today. Today I'm a bit meh, but I had a little cat nap in the sun, which was nice. As a presenter and someone to work with, she's certainly got a lot to learn. Paul decides to wake Heather to try and work out why she is so unmotivated. I'm a lazy ass. I don't know, is that your angle? I'm a lazy ass. Yeah, that's it? I'm a lazy ass. They said so they want me to uh, be more of myself. I was very proud of Paul today. He said to Heather, um, it's hurtful when you're not enthusiastic and you're not appreciative. If you're not enjoying what he's showing you, that's kind of, you're saying to him, you don't care what he does. And personally, that can be offensive. Even though the camera's not rolling, 
while we're on the job, you always have to be on. You know, you have to be performing, you have to be charming, smiling, polite, and you can't let your personal issues uh, become evident to the people you're working with. It's still fun and exciting. I like the opportunity, but television's hard. While Heather seems to be giving up, on Hamilton Island, Susie is her usual enthusiastic self. Today was incredible. I got to go out on a 40-foot yacht um, to learn to sail. Um, I wasn't expecting something quite so big to learn to sail, but, you know, I did okay. I steered it a lot, which was cool. Sailing the Whit Sunday sounds too good to be true. This guy's in the business of making it happen. Sharky, tell me a little bit about Sunsail and what you guys do. Well, over here in the Whit Sundays, we've got a, a bareboat charter fleet and we take people out for five day courses. We also got opportunities to do one day as well if they just want to try before they go away for a whole week. Well, how's the wind looking? Wind's looking good, it's picking up nicely, so uh, I suggest uh, we go sailing. Let's do it. Okay, uh, just bring it around, put your weight on it. Right. Start pulling. Right. And we can just feel the boat pick up the speed. Okay, that is beautiful. And with that, we've gone in a silence when stealth mode, and it's just the wind that's making us sail. It's fantastic. I got really angry on the yacht, and I was just really, really frustrated with, um, with Susie's performance. I was just going, you're just giving me nothing to work with here. I was struggling with basic conversation skills, which sucks, because I have good conversation skills normally, and uh, I don't know. I just thought, you're on a yacht in the middle of the Sundays and we're struggling to get a peep out of you. When I'm told to just go for it, it's like, ah! and I just can't think of the words. There's no engine running, there's, we're burning no fuel, we're just, running just the wind feet. that you feel on your face, that's the only thing that's making us move. Beautiful. So just one little thing that I picked up today in your interviews, people need to experience it with you. And also I'm getting feedback, which is just like, yes, thank you. And just, I said to you at one point, um, something about I'd like to you know, learn a bit more how you're feeling. That's what it's like to be sailing. Um, mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'm concentrating. I thought, well, what are you concentrating on? You know, what, what are you there Not for? Not crashing the boat. I'm <laughs> just petrified that I'm going to crash this into something. You can't do anything wrong. It's, it's all open water around us. You need to be concentrating okay. on this. That, okay. That's your main focus. Yep. Whatever, whether you're riding a camel, riding a boat, trying to stay on a bucket yep. ball, your main focus is the, the TV, the camera. That's what you're there for. I'm not a sailor. All you have to do with this is point the boat, turn the wheel to where you want the boat to go. I'm trying that. It's just not you're working. Doing really well. But Susie's not the only one struggling. Boats are hard. I haven't shot much on boats um, because, you know, you're up and down the whole time and you sort of, you just try and not fight the movement. So there you go, there you have uh, Whitehaven Beach. Whitehaven Beach is on Whitsunday Island, the largest of the 74 islands in the Whitsundays. The beach stretches uninterrupted over six kilometres. Whitehaven Beach has consistently been voted one of the world's top three beaches, and you can see why. The sand here is 100% silica, which gives it its dazzling white appearance. And the water is not only crystal clear, it's a beautiful 28 degrees. And the best part, you can only reach this place by boat or seaplane. So your own private slice of paradise is never too far away. And there's mine there. The Hobart crew are being treated to a night of luxury at the Rest Point's exclusive revolving restaurant. They have been joined by the hotel's PR manager, Paula. But Heather will show her immaturity, firstly using her phone at the table. On a few occasions when dealing with Paula, our PR person who's got some great things, she uh, embarrassed us. I felt Caroline and I both felt the same way. It was embarrassing. There were no pleases and thank yous and there's not enough smiles. It was all a bit awkward. I, I felt she embarrassed us a, a few times and it made me a bit uncomfortable. She just said things. So I had heels on with the bathing suit and the skirt. But then we just ended up chilling asleep. Throughout the show, Heather has clearly been Dean's favourite. I hassle you more than others, because I see you as the greatest. I see you more than anyone else. Over dinner, she drops a bombshell. I'm the American. Revealing the real reason for his favouritism. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I know. I'm the American. I'm 
what he can't, is hoping on sells to the U.S. because I'm his American. With the belief this makes her untouchable, it suddenly makes sense to Paul why she's being so disrespectful. I think she's got a good chance of winning because the decisions aren't necessarily in our hands and uh, I think she shouldn't be winning. I don't think she's really serious about the work. I don't think she has a really great work ethic. In Sydney, the crew has travelled two hours out of town to visit the picturesque Blue Mountains, which is a World Heritage Site. Natalie was pretty unimpressed uh, with the whole thing. Hmm. Is this it? I, I wasn't really that excited about it, but I tried to make it exciting whenever I was doing my lines. I'm at Scenic World. This is um, the skyway that I'm on at the minute, and from it you can see the three sisters in the background. Um, I would really recommend you come and... I don't know what else to say. It's okay, it's okay. Um, where's all the information I gave you? Despite earlier preparation, Natalie still doesn't know what to say. After some guidance from Jala, she tries a new angle. I'm at Scenic World and I'm on the Skyway. The most thing about this is the beautiful scenery you can see from here, but also the glass bottom where you can see the valley below. This is so amazing. I would recommend this, but it's not for people that are scared of heights. She apparently had no idea of what the three sisters were. So it just comes back to another bone for me to pick with Dean. If you're going to pick pretty girls, you're not going to get the sort of enthusiasm and reaction you would get if we had chosen girls that actually have an interest in travel. Yeah, I've seen mountains before. Once they cross over the valley and take in the spectacular views that Natalie has no interest in, they take to the railway. <laughs> struggle to constantly be having to remind Natalie to actually be excited about something. She barely says a word unless you prompt her. Oh my Lord. She did her pieces, she said what she had to say, but, uh, but as far as enthusiasm, once again, it's, it's, this wasn't there for her. Scenic World has a steep old railway cabin car in the world. The 450 metre drop leads us through the ancient rainforest and the famous mountains. I just think she's not very used to actually interacting with people on an intelligent level. No, you're not fucking. You're gonna start talking. When I'm walking? Yeah, as you're talking. I'm pretty sure she can't even think whatsoever. It took her about you know, four or five times to get it right. And it's not a big line, it's quite easy to remember. She had three hours to practice the line before we got there and she still failed. Wow, that place is fantastic. If you want a bit of Australian culture and to go on some crazy ride, this place is the place to be, Scenic World. I just wanted to finish it off a little bit more, like I'll, something personal at the end of it. Do you have any personal recommendations for it? Did you feel any emotion about it? She's not um, performing the way I would hope the girls would be performing at this part of the competition. Just the emotion you get from yeah. it. Back in Hobart, the PR manager suggests after-dinner drinks, but the crew are fearful of Heather's behaviour and decline. Heather was behaving quite poorly and she's under a lot of stress with her boyfriend, so we figured it best not to embarrass ourselves. Heather's relationship back in America has had some trust issues since she developed a crush on one of the camera crew. I am attracted to Mark mm. in that way, but it's not... I don't want to... He leaves Friday. There's just no point in even... She speaks to boyfriend Matt, hoping to resolve things. I don't understand why you're being such a dick. I'm not being a dick. You're being really I rude. I'm just sick of it all, Heather. Well, the telephone conversation that we recorded with Heather, I feel a little bit funny about because I've never done anything like that before and I'm still unsure why she let us do it in the first place. In every conversation that we've had lately, it's all been about you how you've put so much work into this relationship, how this trip has been such a burden on your life. Matt says this show was a bad decision and that it's done nothing but ruin his life. Okay, well how has this trip been a burden on your life and how much effort have you put into this relationship? I've lost my best friend and my husband. What came out of the conversation was, was quite funny actually. Your husband. What husband? You! Heather's been going on about her husband 
left her for her best friend who discovered us all the bullshit. And the fact that you can go to a different country and be there a week and find somebody attracted to want to know him better. And it just seems like they, they broke up because she's moved on, she's come to Australia and jeopardised their relationship. My God, Heather. It took you a week to find somebody else. I was in a different country. Yeah, there's... No, me, there's no, that has nothing to do with it. If you are weak and you've got somebody else that you would rather be with than me. So, there's two sides to every story. Everyone knows that. Heather's obviously told us the story that puts herself in the best light. As some young girls do, they create fiction and create drama because I think they thrive on the drama. I never said that I wanted to be with him. I said that I was attracted to him and that was it. And that's as and far as the relationship went. you better than you cried when he left. I didn't cry when he left, actually. Well, that's what you said. I basically put everything on the line for nothing that will ever come of anything else between me and Mark. Without the drama, there's nothing. So they created in order to, for their dysfunctional relationship to live on. My personal life lately in the last week has made everything take everything too literally. So I'm not quite sure how Whatever. now to deal with anything after just having that phone call from Matt. I obviously didn't want to be with anybody but you. Bullshit. I learned that television is harder than it looks, that there's always pressure no matter what just because there's a camera in your face for some reason. Do you know how hard it is to have cameras around you all the time? and not cry. Quite literally want to call into a corner, turn the lights off and cry and not do anything else for the next two weeks. Unfortunately for Heather, she is in the middle of a competition and the producers have very little sympathy. Next time on Travel Girls. I'm feeling good about the competition. I feel like I'm just piggybacking her the whole way through. I just really wanted to um, have a lot more fun with it. It's complete colossal failure. We've got it on camera. I was so nervous doing this. Are you sick of people that can't get their pieces done? Yeah, absolutely. She just has no idea. The next person that's going to be eliminated.